Good afternoon. Oh, yeah, I might need that. If it wasn't for the fact that I know you have assigned seating, I'd be shaming all of you that are sitting in the back, but since it's assigned seating, it is what it is. I want to say a couple of things before I begin. So I do want to recognize uh, Leaf for, and say thank you so much to their leadership for putting this on to Crystal and then particularly to Kristen um, for putting on such a great show for us. We really appreciate it. So let's give them a round of applause. Do you need to tell me where to stand? Must I go backwards? I can. Must I just speak softer? Speak louder? OK. All of you have this at your tables. And so you can take this away and read it later. Don't read it now. So everybody took it out and started reading it. Put that away. That's for you to read later. And that will give you some information about the district. But we're going to do things a little differently today. So bear with me. Uh, they gave me a music stand. So here it goes. Friends, Romans, and countrymen, please lend me your ears. Oh, that's the wrong one. Welcome to hashtag one LISD. It's different here. Here we operate in the Leander way. We build relationships, trust, and ethical behaviors. We think students first, systems, and continuous improvement. We create a passion for working and learning. We create excellence. We have a focus on student learning that we execute through collaboration, ownership, failing forward, and cycles of improvement. The world is rapidly changing place. And so what A.J. Giuliani says has become more important than ever. Our job is not to prepare students for something. Our job is to help students prepare themselves for anything. So what is the state of the district? We are a learning organization of over 48,000 individuals, human beings, interacting on a daily basis, learning together to become critical and creative thinkers skilled communicators and collaborators, compassionate community contributors, and adaptable and reflexive individuals. That was showcased right there just a minute ago. Flexible, yes. Adaptable, did you see how they nearly took the chief of staff out? <laughs> but didn't. So please allow me today to take some time to share some of our stories. Tim Godfrey is one of our transition services graduates in our SELF 18 plus program. Tim started his Leander ISD journey at Knowles Elementary and later transferred to Pleasant Hill before heading off to Wiley Middle School. For his high school years, he started off in Rockport, Fulton, but quickly relocated back to Cedar Park when Hurricane Harvey hit. Tim graduated from Ralph's High School. And he moved on then to spend some time in our 18 plus program. And during that time, we have seen him mature in many ways. Tim works part time at Sonic and has held this job for two and a half years already. He enjoys his duty and he's a very hard worker. The managers say that he's a wonderful team player and that everyone enjoys being around him. Tim is very independent in life skills and takes care of his bank account, his own bills, and his own transportation needs. He has an incredible sense of humor. I want you to look at the three of us sitting behind him at graduation. He had that whole auditorium in stitches. He always puts a smile on everyone's face. The teacher shared he is a go-getter and is always wanting more. He is so excited to build independence and he is motivated by money. <laughs> he's been pushing to keep his job. And like I said, he's an incredibly hard worker. Olivia Lucero just graduated from New Hope High School. 
She was an active member of my superintendent student advisory council for the last year. And so I got to know Olivia really well. Olivia came to us from Colorado. She faced many personal challenges and struggles. She was failing school, and she was ready to drop out until she found New Hope High School. And she'll tell you that New Hope High School changed her life, perhaps even saved it. When given the chance and support she needed, she flourished. She graduated, and she made significant contributions to my superintendent student advisory council in the process. Alice Kang graduated as the salutatorian for Glen High School. And we have Mr. Tom Glenn here, who was at this graduation and heard Alice speak. Alice started out really quiet and shy in my student's superintendent student advisory council, but she soon leaned into the opportunity for leadership and really blossomed. What was really fun for me to watch was how she navigated the extremely stressful college application process. Raise a hand if you had a kid go through that process. Oh, well, bless the rest of you. I was lucky enough to see her interacting with her peers at an admitted student dinner and then see her tenacity as she wrangled her way off the wait list at Carnegie Mellon Un University. There is certainly a bright future ahead for this young lady. Andrew Barker graduated from Vista Ridge High School as a member of the Lone State JROTC. You just saw some of their members a few minutes ago. Andrew is one of two Leander ISD graduating seniors accepted into the US Marine Corps. These are Andrew's words. The biggest reason I enlisted in the US military was the feeling of responsibility I was always taught growing up and that there were other people fighting for my freedom around the world. As I grew up, I felt a responsibility to pay that service forward and protect the freedom of the next generation to come. In my time at ROTC, I found the military structure I've grown up with. ROTC definitely got me through high school with a sense of family and unity. ROTC also helped me with my enlistment, finding a recruiter, and helping me get into physical shape for boot camp. I grew up with a Marine father, so the military was always something I found interesting, and now I have a boot camp, boot camp ship date this Sunday to start the path to becoming a United States Marine. Jenna Thomas graduated from Cedar Park High School. And these are her words. Hi. Oh, hi. So a little about me is I've always been sure that I want to help people one day. And having such compassionate teachers, such as Mrs. Spinelli and Doc McPherson, really encouraged my passion for healthcare. They helped me get real hands-on experience, and even throughout the difficulties of senior year, as well as my personal struggles, the program and the people involved were always there to help. Even at the end of high school, within the health science program, I was able to create a resume, as well as look at job opportunities nearby with Spinelli's help. And because of all the support and backing I had, I was able to get a job settled even before graduating with Seton Medical Center in Austin. My healthcare teachers were my backbone in this and are the people who supported, cared for, and celebrated with me in my accomplishments. But I mentioned we're a learning organization of over 48,000 individuals, and it's not only about our graduates from the class of 2022. So here's a tiny sample of some of the other 40,000 odd students in our system. Azariah Tenegni is at Cedar Park Middle School in the eighth grade. He's a Leaf Star Award winner, He's nominated by his principal and his counselor. And you can see this on this kid's face. This is perhaps the happiest, kindest kid you'll ever meet. He always has a smile on his face. He's always ready to help with anything. And I love to imagine what we'll be saying about him when he graduates in the class of 2026. 
Sophia Ochoa is at River Ridge Elementary in the fifth grade. She participated in that school's broadcast journalism program this year. And she's on the path to journalistic stardom. She can't wait to blow up the announcements at Canyon Ridge Middle School next year. And she also has her eye on the award-winning yearbook program right here at Vandegrift High School. But wait, we saved the best for last. <laughs> Eli Ponce. This is a Reed Elementary kindergarten, kindergarten in our dual language program. He lives in a bilingual home, and he was able to build relationships with his bilingual partner at school through all sorts of collaborative learning activities. One of his partners, Saeed, was a quieter student, but Eli knew that he could support his partner with communication, but that his partner knew more about science words than Eli did. They worked together, building on their strengths towards a common goal in their science lessons about movement, truly skilled communicators and collaborators. But none of these students' stories would be possible without our life-changing staff. Just gotta make sure it shows up there, right? <coughs> On the left there, you'll see some of our instructional assistants from Leander High School who attended prom with their students that they care for. If that's not going above and beyond, then I don't know what is. Our IAs work diligently day in and day out, close side by side with the teachers that they work with, serving the individual needs of each one of, of our students. And what can I not say about the teachers in our system? Without them, we couldn't do anything. They go above and beyond day in and day out to meet the needs of individual children in their care. And they do it selflessly with care and love in their hearts. We have a fantastic group of counselors in our system who make it their priority despite the fact that they're responsible for four, sometimes 500 children at a time to take care of both the academic and the personal needs of our children and then sometimes of the rest of us adults in the system too. I'm gonna have to have a word with these assistant principals about their spelling. Maybe I need to send them back to Eli. But our assistant principals are the backbone of our administrative teams at our campuses. Books, butts, and buses is what you'll hear. But they do so much more than that and provide incredible instructional support for these folks, our principals in the system. I've always said that our principals are perhaps the most important people in our system because they're the ones who create the environment that make that moment in time where teachers interact with students possible to happen exactly the way that it should. Some of them go above and beyond. That's Charlie Cox in the top left corner in the fireman suit. I don't know if he's allowed to do that or not, but he did anyway. They get down on the floor with their kids, and if you go look on Instagram, you'll find the, the Instagram selfie challenge that uh, Mr. Simpson is engaging with his students in. I think they're winning. And I cannot say enough about our very lean but very mean central office staff. This last three years in particular, they have really gone out of their way to make sure that we can stay open and stay safe. They've been on campuses, serving in classrooms, serving in cafeterias, cleaning tables, doing all kinds of duties that are in that bottom part of their contract are the duties as assigned. I had the privilege of gathering with these folks the other day all in one room for the first time in three years. And you know what surprised me the most? was how few of them there were. They clean over a million square feet of building every single day with about half the number of staff that we need. They don't complain. They don't cause trouble. They just get on with it. 
and it's really incredible. And you just experience some of our child nutrition staff and the incredible work that they do. I promise they don't feed the kids like this every day. <laughs> At least that's what my kid tells me. But then he only eats pizza every day, so. But they do an incredible job feeding our kids day in, day out. When you, if you've listened to any of our board meetings, you'll have heard how many meals they serve on a daily basis, how out of the way they go with very few staff, um, some of them doing the duty of three and four different people at the same time. Our day starts early in the morning, and sometimes this, these are the, the friendly faces that our students see for the very first time every day, and the last face that our students see every night when they get off. Our bus drivers and our bus monitors, and all of the transportation folks who support that system and that network. And this is Nathan. He's always fixing something. And it's amazing when you have over a million square feet of facility how much stuff needs fixing all the time to make sure that we can stay open and stay safe. We couldn't do any of this without the support of our parents. And it's hard to pick a story that tells the support that we get from our parents. But this happened at self-graduation, actually, uh, right after Tim spoke. You, saw, you met Tim earlier. Um, and Kim Taggy has had a student in our system for quite a while, and I want to read you her words. Each kid is different, and meeting them where they are helps them see that they can do great things. At the beginning of every art meeting, we're always asked, what do you want for your son or daughter for their future? 37 odd, six visits, four transition meetings, four PCP meetings, a graduation and a celebration of achievement later, my hopes and dreams that I've shared at the beginning of those meetings for 20 years haven't changed. My goal for my daughters and tonight for you graduates is to know that you are valued and loved, for you to have a community, and for you to find the place where you contribute to society. Forty-eight thousand individuals, and I have the privilege of having seven bosses. Mrs. Trish Bodie has an insatiable intellectual curiosity which drives her to deeply analyze situations and seek clarity through questions. At the same time, she is conscious of the impact her questions can have, and she manages her framing and timing exquisitely. This curiosity, coupled with her passion for governance, public education, and policy making, has allowed her to grow exponentially as a leader in her role as board president. Through her active listening skills, she consistently seeks to build the capacity of her fellow board members while expertly gathering consensus whenever possible. As a servant leader, she shares her time and talent generously with other school districts in her role as the Central Texas School Board Association president. Dr. Gloria Gonzalez Dolakia is an advocate for all children. She's passionate about diversity, equity, and inclusion work and brings her experience and skills to bear in her governance role to positively influence the culture of hashtag one LISD to meet the needs of each and every individual in the system. Her interest in this work stems from her focus on family and community. Gloria is a strong supporter of a robotics program in the district and works tirelessly to ensure that all children have access to an opportunity in STEM fields and robotics in particular. Mrs. Alexis Grimes, could you please stand up? Thank you. Mrs. Alexis Grimes brings balance to the board. She listens quietly and intently, using her voice with great intentionality. She understands how to broker conversations and works diligently towards compromise whenever possible. Alexis is passionate about being fiscally responsible while meeting the needs of each and every individual in the system and maximizing our use of existing facilities. She's a creative thinker, willing to propose solutions that are not about conformity, but about what can help stretch our thinking about how we serve children. Mrs. Sade Fashikin is our newest board member. In the short time she's been on the board, she has learned quickly what questions to ask and how to be effective. Her understanding of the law has enabled her to provide healthy insight into policy discussions. Sade always seeks first to understand before she shares her opinions and thoughts. She is an advocate for all children, which she demonstrates through her support of the district's efforts in diversity, equity, and inclusion. 
Mr. Aaron Johnson is currently the longest serving board member on the team of eight. He has a strong institutional memory with a clear understanding of why processes operate the way that they do. Aaron is highly analytical and he brings strength to the table in district discussions around student achievement. His passion for the success of each and every student academically and holistically is clearly evident. His knowledge of the law and how local policy interacts with the law provides clarity to many conversations around best practices in the district. Mrs. Christine Maurer knows how to get things done effectively and efficiently. She's a strong advocate for all children and demonstrates this through her work in diversity, equity, and inclusion space. Her heart for service shines through in everything she does, including her passion for fine arts and the hashtag allies, one LISD band programs in particular. Mrs. Anna Smith. <laughs> is incredibly energetic and enthusiastic. You're not going to stand standing up? Yes. She uses this energy to great effect as she visits, visits campuses and departments throughout the district, and I mean throughout the district, encouraging students and staff to be the best they can be. Anna has a strong curiosity about how systems work throughout the district and uses what she learns to inform her governance decisions. Anna is a strong advocate for all children with a special place in her heart for students with special needs. And I want to recognize our board president, Trish Bodie, is standing at the back. So we give her a round of applause, too. So as Simon Sinek points out, we have to know our why before we can focus on our how and our what. And our board has done an incredible job of painting our why. In developing their core beliefs, they have focused on the one thing that you've heard throughout the first part of this presentation, which is each and every individual in the system. And that shines out through every one of these core beliefs that you'll find in your little booklet. And then gets resounded in the vision that they've developed for our district and the how we're going to get there, which is by knowing and appreciating each of our children, by creating a safe and supportive environment to nurture their personal growth, and by partnering with each and every family to make sure that we accomplish those goals. They have taken some very bold steps by developing a five-year strategic plan that outlines a really bold vision for this district over the next five years. This is just one sample of what that looks like. Every one of these has a goal, an impact, and high leverage strategies. Those are very clearly laid out on our website, and I encourage you to go and look at that, that document. But everything comes back to this. Our job is to create empowered learners. And we do that through accomplishing the tenets of the graduate profile in each one of the students who exits our system. And we just exited over 3,200 students out of our system in May. And our job is to make sure that each and every one of those has these traits so that they can go out and be successful in the world. So in a perfect world, we would be able to accomplish all of this without any barriers. Unfortunately, we exist on the six-lane highway of life. And we have to manage everything else that's going on around us. And so I wish to pivot a little bit now and acknowledge some of that as we continue to really examine the state of the district. And in starting that conversation, I'd like to remind you of our circles of control. There are some things that we have directly in our control that we can do something about and make active changes about. Then there are some things that we can influence on the outside through our legislative advocacy, through championing children in their own lives and in their own homes. And then there's a much larger circle of things that we're just really worried about, that we really have very little control over, but that we continue to worry about and we continue to work inside our circle of control to manage as best that we can. So much tragedy, 
so close to home. I wake up every morning and I pray. And I say, not here, not today. And then I go to work and I ask hard questions because we have to do everything inside our circle of control to make sure that what is outside of our circle of control does not come inside. And we will continue to do that work diligently, day in and day out. There's a lot of communication coming from the top level of our state government right now. And I want to tell you that everything I've seen and heard so far, we're already doing. But we have to do more. At the same time, we have to balance the experience that our students have inside our system. And you heard about the love and care of the people in our system. And we have to keep that at the front of our minds. We cannot create a prison for our kids. And yet we have to keep them safe. Because every morning, 42,000 families drop off their most precious cargo and leave them in our care. And our job is to return them in the afternoon a little better than when we got them in the morning. I pray every day that I can return every one of those kids a little better. Here's another small challenge that we face. We're adding about 1,000 to 1,200 kids a year to our system. That's a whole school, at least. And so this graphic is in your booklet, and you can go look at it later. But I'll just point out that when we add almost 19,000 single-family homes and almost 17,000 multifamily homes in our system in the next 10 years, there's some work to do to make sure that we can accommodate all of the children who come to us because of that. And to put that in perspective, remember this little guy? He graduates in 2034. When he graduates, there'll be over 52,000 students in our system. That's 10,000 more than there are right now. That's bigger than the school district I came from. So how are we going to manage that? Well, we have to get our heads around school finance in the state of Texas. That's another whole challenge on its own. So we're trying to make sure that not only do we know what we're talking about, but hopefully the rest of the community knows too. And so this resource is something that just went up on our website. Um, and I urge you to go and dig deep into this. We're going to keep adding to it. And we hope that you'll send us feedback about it so that you can get educated about school finance in the state of Texas and why we find ourselves in the position that we're in. So two big things are going to happen in November, more than likely. I'm going out on a limb here because this hasn't happened yet. But more than likely, the board's going to have to call what's called a VATRE, a tax ratification election. Because of really rapidly rising appraisal values in our system, and all of you know and understand what I'm talking about, we are finding too much money in one of the buckets that we have, the interest and sinking bucket, and not enough money on the M&O side to run the day-to-day -day operations of the district. And this is all managed by tax rate. And so we have an opportunity to lower the tax rate on the INS side significantly because of rising appraisal values. And at the same time, we are going to try to raise the tax rate on the M&O side in order to make sure that we can pay our teachers and our IAs and our principals and all those folks you saw in those slides earlier what they deserve so that they can still live in our community and care and love for our children every day. 
In that process, we hope as a system to lower the tax rate by six pennies, the overall tax rate. But I've just said that in that process, we're going to raise the M&O tax rate some. Well, here's the ballot language that's going to be on the November ballot if the board decides to do this. And it's going to clearly say this will result in an increase in the tax rate and an increase in your taxes. Because it will on the M&O side. What it doesn't say is that we're going to lower the tax rate on the INS side by way more. So your overall tax rate is going to drop by six pennies. We have to let people know the real story here. They have to know and understand that if we don't ever go out for VATRE, or if VATRE fails, the taxpayer will see just under a two penny drop in their tax rate. If this passes, the taxpayer will see a six penny drop in their tax rate, despite the language that we have to, by law, put on the ballot. One more slightly complicated item is going to be on the November ballot, and that is called an ACE election. Because of our rising, rapidly rising appraisal values, we are going to go back into recapture, which means that our M&O bucket is too full, and so the state's going to take some of that local tax effort back. The interesting part is we can't send it back to the state unless we buy attendance credits from them. We cannot buy attendance credits from the state unless our community approves this ballot language. That's going to be a challenge for us to communicate effectively. If this election passes, we get to pay the state their due recapture through attendance credits. If this fails, because people don't understand it, then the state can come in and annex appraisal value from us. Not land. So they leave the land and all the expenses and the children and everything that goes with it, they just take the appraisal value away. That would be really bad for us. So watch out for more information about these two things. I think I've outlined three rather large challenges for us as we head forward in the state of the district. But there's more. This is a whack world we live in, people. It's a world where people are pushing the extremes. where division has become a reality for us. If you don't believe me, then come visit us a couple of Thursday nights. This binary that has developed is very dangerous. And if we're not careful, it could be the downfall of public education in the state of Texas and perhaps our nation. So how do we manage that binary? Well, we have to reintroduce the complexity that is public education. These are complex problems. They don't have easy solutions. The only way that we're going to find any solution to any of these huge crises that we have is by coming back together somewhere near the center. We have to dilute the binary by reintroducing complexity. If you haven't read this book, I highly recommend it. We're already doing this. It requires listening with empathy. It requires building trust. It requires one-on-one -on -one interactions throughout our community to help people to understand and believe that what we're doing changes lives. Stability, especially of leadership, is going to be extremely important if we're going to navigate through this process. Our children deserve it, but they cannot create it. We have a responsibility to each and every one of the over 48,000 individuals in our system to do this right. The hashtag OneLISD community cultivates each 
student individually to produce the most sought after creators of our future world. The future of our planet is right here in our public schools. And we're going to let you have a little glimpse into the joy of the 3,200 students that we just pushed out of our system. Thank you. Pretty good. A little nervous. Oh my god, excited. Literally, I'm ready. I'm terrified. Nervous. It's insane. I feel like it's not real. What is the thing you're going to miss most about high school? Uh, my friends. I couldn't agree with you more there. I would say probably the teachers and the friends. I mean, it's a brotherhood. I mean, I've found some of my closest friends here, so that's probably what I'm going to miss, yeah. Definitely the teachers, and then probably all the unexpected memories, like stuff that you didn't think was going to happen, and then did, and it like changed your life. All my homies at Vandegrift, we made it, boys. Yeah, we, we made it, made it. we made it. Let's go. It's my honor to congratulate the class of 2022. Not only because we are finally done with high school, but also because we are graduating as one of the most resilient classes I know. You've demonstrated the ability to adapt and you've figured out how to keep achieving and progressing towards your goals, no matter what obstacles are in your way. You have learned that you can do hard things and collectively, you have accomplished tremendous success. Today is not a celebration of GPAs nor grades. Today, we celebrate our joint success and determination that brought each of us here. Every student and their method of learning is different. Every student has a culmination of life experiences which paves the road that they travel. The point being, it is the goal of Leander Independent School District and Ralph's High School to meet the needs of all students attending our schools. Thank you for the board and for the superintendent and people who are guiding this district. In these dark and pivotal times, it can be hard to find our place in this often daunting world. I'm sure that many, if not all of you, are at least slightly frightened about entering into the next chapter of your life. I want you to know that having reservations is okay. Life is scary enough when you know what's gonna happen, which makes the unknown of the future that much more terrifying. It's okay to embrace it, to embrace the adversity. Remember that tomorrow isn't guaranteed, but today is. Yes, our futures are unknown at this moment, but I know everyone here is more than capable of achieving the future they want. So don't let the things that scare you keep you from trying at all. All that we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. So the moment we walk out of here, go out there and explore the world and make every minute of your life count. Often in our society, we lambast those that don't agree with us. My wish for you is to always be kind to others. You will be amazed at the results that that will bring you. We all have to choose to be the one. Be the one to talk to that person who's sitting by themselves. Be the one to show compassion towards others, even when they're different from you. Nothing is going to change us when we turn our tassels. We're the exact same people. But as we graduate and go on our different paths, through our successes and our failures, the biggest impact that we can have on this world is our decision to be the one. Congratulations to the class of 2022, and remember that you are never alone on this journey. Castle, we say farewell to high school and become the class of 2022. May we never walk alone.
subscribe. Graduating is amazing. I don't have to go to high school ever again.